It's another episode of Small Talk. I'm Dylan. That's not Dylan. That's not me. The one I get <laughs> confused with more than any human being on the planet. And this has to be <laughs> the weirdest thing ever for people to be to see. It's it's a mirror image. It's literally a mirror image of uh, myself and Jason Acuna, we man legitimately one of my heroes in my life this is the coolest <laughs> thing i have ever done what's, what's awesome, up man? man how are you i'm good how are you good I put this you is over uh, here so i look at you more yes. this way i i yeah. still don't get it like every it, no one it, because of pandemic and shutdown i don't feel whenever there's one of these conversations it's ever eye to eye it's always here or here or just never no one knows where to look it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, like yeah. it's like Talladega Nights, not knowing what to do with your hands. That's yeah. literally what it is. And all whenever we do these interviews. No um, worries. So this is the coolest thing for me because you were such a uh, a hero and an inspiration and just like the guy. Because I, uh, as you people know, am a little person or a midget. We, we could say the M word on here. That's completely okay, by the way. No worries with uh, me. <laughs> that, uh, so seeing you do everything you did when I was in my middle school and high school years was the coolest. Um, that just, I mean, from the skateboarding to the jackass stuff, all of that was absolutely awesome. So this is incredible. Uh, you were not born into a family of little people, I've uh, no. learned. So uh, normies, as we call them, what? Uh, yeah, no, everybody, everybody in my family's norm. That's awesome. That and yeah. and also, I saw that, and I, I heard you, your mom or your parents took you to a little person convention growing up, and yeah. that just it just wasn't for you. Yeah, no. Uh, when I was younger, it wasn't for me. I think, mate, you know, after a while, realizing I just wasn't grasping that I was a little person I was because none of my friends around me were little nobody you know it wasn't I never struggled with mom I can't make any friends or you know these kids are picking on me anytime I was anywhere I always made a bunch of friends so that's exactly how I was growing up it was like because I wasn't around little people I wasn't yeah, around that at same. all so totally yep normal humans were my friends so yeah it was almost exactly. like a it wasn't a forced to like hey man hey dylan you have to like this like this is your culture but it was just like it was odd to me it was an odd feeling being at those conventions because it wasn't normal life same totally like you, like you said in your interviews like it, it's it's not like you're going to being pushed into hey skateboarders have to be with skateboarders and this guy this section of the world has to be with them it's very odd looking at it yeah. now, but it's, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It is great for the community, but it's just, I, I loved it because I, it, it was, a, it was I, a party week as a, as a, as a teenager for me, it was just, a, <laughs> it was a, it was a fun party week in a new state. I wasn't in Wisconsin. I was in San Francisco or Toronto for the first time. So that was yeah. about it. But as a, yeah, it was, uh, it was just different. It was, I think it's, it's a good thing. You know, later on, I realized it is a good thing especially for younger kids or whatever, especially nowadays that when I grew up, everybody was outside. There was no cell phones. There was no, you know, internet or social media or YouTube, anything. So I think for nowadays where a little person could get stuck at home or whatever and doesn't feel like they have certain friends or whatever, I think it's a good uh, place to go. And like you said, have just the greatest weekend or a great week, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, so then it, it, your, your childhood and all of that, did you have a lot of health issues like a lot of little people have, or were you pretty good with everything? I was pretty good. Like my teeth, these were never in braces, hearing's fine, vision's fine. Uh, back, I actually, most little people get back surgery when they're younger. I actually messed up my back skating. So then I got the that back was going to be my next thing is how, yeah. how did you get through skating? And then obviously all the jackass stuff and not, I've had two, three of them now, my fourth next month. And it's just, man, I only have zero I like only growing up one is nuts due to a skate injury. 
And it's that's like, yeah, that's crazy. Man. Yeah. Did so, that. And I've been slammed, uh, even recently, yeah. uh, Brock Lesnar slammed me Yo, through the restaurant I, I, table. I, I, I have and, that in my and, notes as one of the it, coolest things. Ever. And everybody's like, how's your back, dude? How's you? And I'm like, fine. That's nuts, <laughs> man. That's, and I, yeah, my, my two back surgeries from when it was from when I was a kid, uh, scoliosis was real bad. And the first okay. time they cut me open and it was a, he's never worked on a little person ever. And he just uh, went yeah. into the surgery and he, uh, hit a nerve and it paralyzed me from the waist down. And then we had to oh, literally shit. rush me uh, like a couple months later to Minneapolis and they put a rod in my back with fusion. And then the first thing he says is no trampolines and no contact sports. Obviously I didn't listen to him going into the profession I'm in. And it's just, yeah. it's one of those things where it's just, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's nuts how some of them go through so much and you lucked out and had nothing until skateboarding. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I broke. I stopped counting broken bones after 10 uh, from skating. So so that was, would you say definitely more from skating than all the stunts? Yeah. yeah. I've only been knocked out and stuff and cut up and badly bruised from like jackass, knock on wood. That's no, crazy. And no that's, broken that's, bones. That's so and Jeff always surprising. Said, I'm yeah. Fuck you. I'm going <laughs> to kill you this time. I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was around. Jeff was around for some WWE stuff. He then he presumed like yeah. WWE did the show called Swerved. He did uh, that, yeah. which is and then he produced that. So like getting being around him again, being such a jackass fanatic that I was being around him, and he instantly like gains a friendship with people, but then instantly wants to fuck with them immediately immediately exactly. wants to fuck with them yeah. so seeing yeah, that I with heard, the wwe I roster heard, wasn't you didn't gabe england come with you or something and do something we did uh some like hot burger eating contest i did a thing with jeff where we uh me and another guy we did a prank with this big dump truck or the uh, garbage truck where yeah. they saw me go in but then they didn't see me escape and it dumped it into the bin it's but just being around him was awesome for me because i saw him fuck with everyone Literally, yeah. these WWE superstars that he probably met that day, he didn't care yeah. at all. That's that nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, skateboarding all your life was that a was that a hobby all your life growing up or still skating? Yeah, correct, correct. Yes, but uh, from a young age, yeah, from about like nine. Wow, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And then yeah. went from that to working for Big Brother. Pretty yeah. was that was that, uh, and then that so Big Brother kind of started the infancy of Jackass. Big Which Brother is, was the start yeah. of Jack. Because we were doing our own like skate videos yeah. that had Jackass stuff in them. So that's where like videos were selling out the door because uh, people wanted to see the Jackass stuff. And along with, but did you guys get the CKY stuff as well? Or was that all put together for Jackass? Bam and those guys were doing yeah. CKY on the East Coast. Yeah. So they were, it was, and it was all at the same time. Okay. So then we realized we better collab and do Jackass to make this really work. So Jackass was almost the collaboration between CKY and Big Brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nuts. Okay. That's awesome. 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 And then it just launches into this pretty fast phenomenon. Once it hit MTV, it was a big deal instantly. Did it, it was, feel like that to you guys? Yes, because when we were filming it, I thought it was going to be something that was on for two episodes. And yeah. then 20 years down the line, people would be like, remember you guys tried to do that crazy? I thought that was going to happen. As soon as it hit, mm-hmm. it hit hard and fast. And I was like, whoa. And I was still on skate tours. So yep. I went on a tour to Japan three months after we you know, launched. Yeah. And it was just hitting Japan. And the guys that made I was even on, bigger for you. The guys I was on tour with uh were tripping out because people were running out of the stores yelling my name. They're like, we man, we man. And uh my friends are like, oh dude, it's over for you now. This is yeah. on. Yeah. That's so. that's uh, for it to hit that over there that late at the perfect time of you doing the tour over there. 
just bumped up your star power internationally, probably yeah. more than anyone's at the time. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. So you start those stunts and you do all that stuff with again, immediately when the gang gets together, I, it, it came off. So just family, like you guys were this unit, you guys were all a family instantly. Did it? Yeah. It does, it, does, it does have that feel ever since day one. It's had that. And that's what people always say that they love, yeah. that they feel like it's like them and their buddies. Like they see the camaraderie. Yes. They feel the connection. They yeah. feel it like for themselves, you know? So. And again, I go back to uh, myself and, and growing up and looking up to you. It's uh, they treated you literally as one of their own as one, the same as they treated Preston or Knoxville or BAM or anything. Yeah. They didn't yeah. like, it was never a, Hey man, we got to go easy on him. At times they went even harder with some yeah. things. And no, it's just yeah. like, of course. it was, it was cool. Like that was, it was never a, all right, push him to the side. And that's what made it seem so real and so bonded between you guys. Yeah. Yep. Was there doing those and uh, peek behind the curtain? Was there in the early days of it a get out of jail card for anything? No, never, There's never. You were thrown. Nope. You were. Th and was the ideas? Was it? Hey, I have this idea for this crazy stunt. Uh, Preston, it's for you. Hey, I have this. Uh, Dave England, it's for you. Or was it kind of a who steps up? Most of them were kind of written for each person and yeah. different things. Like you could tell, like the stuff Preston and I would do together, you knew that was for us. Yeah. But then there would be singled out bits that it was up in the air for who. And one time I have two, two examples. One time we even played pick the shortest straw. And that was literally the one, for the winner or for the loser, essentially. Yeah. yeah we're the winner or loser. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> It was the butt bellows where we put the yes. thing in Preston's butt and then he yeah. farted in Sheila's face. Nobody wanted to do it and Preston picked the shortest straw. So it wasn't for who took it. It was for who had to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. even... <laughs> yeah. And then another one was the, fi the fire hose rodeo. Everybody showed up that day and we were looking at it and we're like, no, I don't want to do it. Nobody want to do it. And all of a sudden, Dave comes out of the van in this just full clear suit. And we're like, Dave's dressed for it. It's his turn. He's dressed. And they're like, oh, well, Dave, you wore the outfit for it. So what that's so there definitely was a not immediate, hey, I'm good for that one for some of the stunts. Yeah, no, it it was you either got called on for it or you picked the shortest straw. <laughs> That's awesome. That that's that's yeah. a good peek behind the curtain of how that all worked because it's mm -hmm. it's when when they would come up with these, you'd think, man, that has to be written for this person or this person because it just on the camera it just fits that person. Yeah. And now thinking back on these studs, you know, years later, it it would be weird to see it as someone else in said stud. Exactly because it just it, it felt it it was like the world wrote it for them and they had yeah. to just yeah so. Was there anything that you that comes to mind immediately that either you came up with that uh, didn't even make it to the lost tapes or or that you shot that didn't make it to the lost tapes? That is like a bummer of man, that that was that wasn't a good one. And it, no one saw the light of day or like nah. it didn't make oh, it to the actual show. There was, there that, a, was that a bummer. One. Yeah, there is one we just did on the recent movie where if you've seen a recent movie. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So have you seen four point five? Yes. Okay. So when everybody does my hot sauce butt yes. chug, I actually took you know one of those nasal rinse containers. Yep. Where you rinse your, but you squeeze it and it shoots yep. it. Bulb, I actually yep. did one of those of my hot sauce, and it goes fucking straight to your brain. My head swelled. I got my eyes pretty much went red and shut, and I was sweating. <laughs> But the studio shut it down because, like, I, I went through it. We filmed it. It was a great bit. But the studio shut it down because they didn't want it to be a copycat bit. So they figured, 
of what? Uh, oh, like, they didn't want they didn't want they didn't want kids or, to do it. Yeah, or anybody doing the nasal rinse thing. Was there? Well, that that's a point in itself. So you have the TV show. Yeah, it. You immediately have. I mean, the the opening graphic is known. It's a it's a it's a known thing now. The the warning graphic. Yeah. Yeah, because every that, show after ours now had to have that. Same it has graphic. to have it. It has to have yeah. it. And 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 because of what you guys did and yeah. the, the following that you guys had, did you see were there stunts with that in the starting right away in the movie, the going into the first movie and the second and the third, that kind of thing? Where no, there wasn't, there has never really been that. It's just that people they know the general public's pretty much idiots and they'll eat tide pods or whatever. Okay. So, <laughs> you so know, it's, it's, so, it's lately, it's lately more than anything. Yes. And we just got banned a lot on TV from things we wanted to do that we never even got to do. Really? So we just, yeah, that's why, like, after the third season of getting banned so much, yeah. we're like, fuck it, we're not doing it anymore. And they're like, well, we need you. And they're like, well, if you want us, we want a movie. So that's how we then got the oh, movie. Oh. So yeah. that's how the movie came about. It wasn't that's a. How we got movies. It wasn't a, this is getting so big, we need to do something bigger. No. It, was a, it was, we're tired of being banned, and we know we can make now Jackass rated R, so we can do whatever we want. Did you see the, the TV show ending and everything ending without the movie? No. I knew, I knew, once we were in the third season, it kept getting, and then we were like, no, we're making a movie now. I was like, hell yeah. If the movie wouldn't have happened, would it have ended? Yeah. If the movie yeah. wouldn't have happened, we would have been done. We would, we would, we would, there was no there was no place for the movie came out in 2002. So there was nothing. There was no YouTube. There was no yep. social media or anything like that yet. We were so far ahead of the game that. Yeah. That's crazy to think about, because nowadays it would be so much. I mean, you don't need television by any means. You yeah, can, you can do everything on your own platform online and make that your your TV, your show. We did, yeah, we didn't know it. So after the first movie, we were done. You know, we did the movie. So, yeah. Uh, and that was 2002. We didn't film the next movie to 2006. Yep. And right then is when cam flip phones came with cameras where you could record. Yep. And that's when we noticed when we were out in public, people were also off to the side filming us. So we then, from then on, had to start watching what we filmed and who was around us. And that was a game changer, too, because it changed oh, what, we, what we did in the public yeah. and different things like that. So so it went more. That's, a, that's an interesting thing that you don't really think of is, I mean, not just production people in that filming, but you can't do it in the public because yeah. you have the cell phones and you have, yeah. I mean, people could spoil it instantly. Totally, I mean, and that's, yeah. they're not your guys's films compared to uh, another, you know, normal movie. Let's say that's a fully closed set and a main yeah. set and all that you yeah. guys are in public for a lot of the students. So to have to try to close that off for some of it, it's almost impossible. And yeah. now you're trying to say, Nope, we can't get, that footage out there otherwise that whole scene is done yeah yeah that's something you don't think about at all especially come, go, going the first movie to the second and then beyond is you have to do closed sets essentially yeah and covid yeah. actually made us do co closed sets yeah. on the last one the newest one <laughs> yeah and which is seeing uh between forever and 4.5 the different you know, the you could tell when during it, the, the, the shutdown oh, yeah. and all that. When, some of the what we filmed before COVID and what we yeah. filmed after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's totally and that funny. was a complete sh stop to everything. Oh, so what happened was we started shooting in December of 2019. Yeah. And March 12th, we took a break. Just to finally take a break, we wanted a week off, maybe a week and a half even. But right then, people started talking about COVID. And then COVID hit, and they're like, all right, we're off for another two weeks. And I'm like, yes, two more weeks of not getting beat up. So it's like a total of three weeks. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, this is awesome. 
and it turned into seven months. So then we you guys didn't back. shoot for seven months. Yeah, we didn't shoot. We left March 12th and didn't come back till September. So it was wow, like I didn't realize that seven months. Yeah. And was it a constant uh, kind of everyone? Yep, maybe in a couple of weeks. Hey, maybe. Oh, totally. We were, all right, maybe we'll come back in a couple of weeks. It's starting to open up. Nope, nope, nope. And it's funny because then that summer, Preston and I just decided to sneak off. And when it opened up just 25% everywhere, we went and met in Aspen, Colorado. And we just picked it out of the blue. And we were both going to drive there. But then we ended up flying. But I did the GPS from both our houses. And it was exactly the middle point within five miles of each other. Really? Yeah. Ah, ah, so ah. It, was, it was pretty awesome to do. That's nice. And we had the whole hotel to ourselves, except for a marriage cup, like a marriage party. The whole, all the restaurants were open. Everything was awesome. It, it was a good time. Was it an immediate bond between you two more than anyone, would you feel? Because it comes off as since, you guys. As since you guys, day one. Yeah. Since day one. Was it, and it was it because of the writing, do you feel? Or even more so that than, than just the stunts doing together? Because you guys was, have always seemed like. It, was, it the was just a bunch of things that we just did together and yeah. all that. had fun. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, 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 and it's cool that it's, how it comes off through the screen is how it really is. And it's not a yeah. forced thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so around that time, going back to Jackass number two now real quick, you guys, the Jackass crew, was going to invade WWE. And it was going, this is in 2007, 2000. This is where I get my, my year wrong. But it, you guys, the, the whole crew was going to be a part of SummerSlam. And I was with WWE at the time. And there was a bunch of stuff happening with the Jackass guys versus WWE guys. And I pitched a boxing match with you. Uh And it was immediately, yep, yes. Their side said, okay. WWE said, okay. And then there was uh, an instance with Chris Benoit and his family on WWE side and a bunch of that. And the whole invasion didn't happen. And it was like, I was so close. I was so close to interacting with the Jackass crew (laughs) and with Wee Man. This was right there. And then it got taken away. And I was like, son of a bitch. It just didn't happen. And it was just such a a wind out of my sails. Because it was like, it would have been really cool because it would have been on pay-per-view. And it would have been in in a WWE ring, which is where I was at the time. Having you guys come and join the fray. And I was like, man, that would have been the best. So that was, it's something that I always was wanted and it, just, it was going to happen. It was like, nope, got taken away. Almost like okay. a bit. It was like, it was like a bit of, of you guys where it just didn't show. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was supposed to happen. Then, so then for the third one, then for the third one, we yeah. wrote the little people, oh, like all town boxing, fighting. The whole, man, I. That fight scene, the bar fight scene is one of my favorite <laughs> scenes ever because I remember seeing it and like, again, I would see it with my buddies and whenever you would have a scene on one of these Jack, I could feel like eyes coming, like, like, like how is he going to react? And I'm dying. Like, this is yeah. the greatest thing ever. And I don't yeah, know how yeah. my buddies wanted me to react, but it was, I always felt like, Okay, is he gonna think this is funny? Is he gonna hate this? What's this other? What's what's the midget gonna react to this one on stage? What's that? it was just like always a fun thing. But that scene, the bar fight scene, and then the guy stumbles out and falls on his face. Oh, it's the, just the best. The it couldn't yeah, have went better. Yeah, yeah. The whole scene couldn't have went better. So we found a bar that was kind of near my town. Okay, and and I would skate and go all around towns and stuff. So we found this bar and we went into it. It was like right when uh, Home Chick and I sat at the bar and my buddy goes, oh, hey, what's up, we man? Good to see you here, man. Yeah. And so Dimitri had to go stand by him and and like, you know, but not tell the crowd and goes, hey, we're filming like something's going to go down. Don't get involved. 
Because if he would have saw, he would have like yeah. jumped it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the guy goes, all right, all right. And I'm like, yeah, good to see you. Like, hey, get your beer later, whatever. And then dude walks in. He goes, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that, when it, that quote, people come up to me and the say man all friend, the, the man friend quote yeah. is the greatest. Yeah. They they always say. Like, Dude, man friend. They're like, what's up, man friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with stuff like that, when you would when you guys would do the the stunts in public, obviously the the more movies you you go through, the two and then three and then four, would it would that ruin would public ruin a lot of stunts recognizing the scenes or or seeing, hey, I wonder if they're shooting something or would that, that would it shut that, down a yeah. and, it would, and what's crazy is we actually didn't have to deal with the public this much in the last movie because which shut was down actually probably beneficial yeah because anywhere we go people are always like hey where's the other guys we what are you guys doing here we you guys filming right now people like, thinking you're always on right always on yeah always on so that, has it happened during mid mid stunt or or shoot where someone's seen like someone's noticed and shut it down and you've had to almost hit the reset button no actually luckily that hasn't happened you know That's people crazy. are people are that smart but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can see the thing of always expecting you guys to be on yeah or and that has to that, be the, i mean the worst literally People are thinking you guys are having the cameras on you at all times when it's just daily life. Yes. Yep. Or like I'm out with my lady eating. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna, what, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? You know? Hey, Preston, hey. Best, little guy. The best quote is Preston was eating lunch somewhere like at a, at a burger place. And these two dudes from Japan, these Japanese dudes from Japan came up and they're like, Preston. We've been waiting 45 minutes to see you do something. And all you've done is eating a hamburger. <laughs> like, yeah, that's all I am going to do. <laughs> <laughs> they just stayed there to wait to see the they scene. Were and it never it out. They were waiting it out. <laughs> Man, again, it's, it's just, I mean, no other... No other, I mean, actor or or anything, any career has that. You guys yeah. have that all the time. So that yeah. makes it even yeah. kind of yeah. crazier. And people don't think about of man, they gotta deal with this as well. This is this is they're dealing with this just as much as the on on screen stuff that they're out, that they are filming. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. When you guys would film these and the, the movies and the stunts especially for the movies because there's such a bigger scale essentially. And you talked about having to, you know, you didn't with the first movie, not wanting to be a uh, band or, or held down anymore. So you had to do the movie. Was it always one crew shooting? It's something that I was always wondering watching them. Is it, is it everyone we, on we, watching this? Everyone's we, watching this one at a time. We started that way. Okay. Like the whole TV show was always one crew. And everyone was together shooting yeah. every stunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once we started doing the movies, then we had to get different crews, different cameras. And then like now when we just did this last movie, it was like 60 people working for us. All so. separately. So there would no, be you, like, you in a group shooting and then this at the same time, this well, crew. Sometimes we would do split crews. We, that's just a split crew. Yeah. Yeah. Just so we can knock out more stuff in one day. That was my other thing is, I mean, all the stuff you guys do and then all the stuff for the point fives, and then the stuff that doesn't even show. That's a lot of yeah. footage and that's a lot of days yeah. to shoot. Yes. So to do that as one crew, man, shooting shooting that whole thing would take forever you'd think yeah that's why it's called forever it took forever yeah. <laughs> but yeah this well, movie i don't this movie we never really had split crews it was every day all of us if the, you notice if you notice every bit has a peanut gallery where we're all in yeah. pretty much. and especially with the new guys who man again fit right in poopies and and zach they just fit in 
immediately there. It's almost like you guys immediately accepted them into this weird fraternity. Uh, we beat them up a little bit before. But, uh, Okay, okay. That's that was another thing I was wondering is it was it was it almost like hey earn your stripes? Yeah, and then, and then none of them earn your stripes. Yeah, none of them balked. So I was like, oh man, they really do want this kind of thing. <laughs> and then while we were first started filming and stuff, we would do stuff like Preston and I were at, at happy hour, and then yeah. Poopies joined. And Poopies thought so Preston and I told Poopies to meet us like at six o'clock. But we went at five o'clock so we could have our own little time and have happy hour. We even had appetizers and stuff. And then boobies came. And then it was like, we only had maybe one more drink or two and then dinner. And boobies like, oh man, I got this, guys. And then it was our whole. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we did stuff like that. <laughs> That's awesome. That, <laughs> but but once they don't be divas about her, put up a fight, and they just want to yeah, be yeah. part of it, it's yeah, instantly yeah. kind of accepted of all yeah, right, they're yeah. here for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. With the new one. Well, I, mean, was, I would question poopies, especially lately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who with, knows for that guy? <laughs> he, he comes off as just man just an an anomaly he's just he is that i feel (laughs) yeah like there's no other person like him on this planet at all Mm -mm. with it being uh, now one of the the usual uh, asked questions of you all the time it was 12 years later uh how is that approached is it just hey it, it was oh, always talked the, about. Always for twelve years we've been waiting. We bring it up all the time. That's what I was going to ask. Is it so a? Is it a? I, every six months, someone so in, the, finally, in a group chat. It hey. was green when it was green lit. We were like, "Oh my god, no way! It's on!" And we've had this built up waiting, yeah, like frustration of wanting to do it. And now, like, we just unleashed. Was it every few months someone would bring it up and canceled? Or... All the time. Really? All the time. Someone, someone would throw a text or someone, you know, like, hey, guys, what do you think about bringing it back? Nope. What do you got? Come on. We're thinking about, you know. Was it ever greenlit before and then put off? No. Mm-mm. It never was a possibility. No, not until we just got it greenlit again. Oh, that's that's incredible of, of all. Yeah. I mean, that whole time. Of it never being a hey, here we go, nope. uh, and then just shut down. That's that's awesome, and that makes it even more special that it did happen. I mean, not just for you guys, for the fans, for everything that it finally got. Hey, we're doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. After this, and in correlation with four point five or forever coming out, you got you're on WWE. You're yeah. you're in my world. In in the Royal I, Rumble in, in WrestleMania. Was, yeah. Well, Royal Rumble was just to be like Knoxville's the, corner man. The corner man. Like, yeah. Anything that we introduced them and ran back. And it was immediately, like immediately, immediately you're you are shown on television. Immediately. My Twitter goes, Woof. I see the WrestleMania match. I see this. It's Wee Man and Hornswoggle. It's happening for sure. We need to make this happen. <laughs> and I'm just sitting home like I did nothing. And also, exactly what you said, you guys were just corner men. Like yeah. for that, it's it's the power of it's, social media at that, like nowadays, oh, yeah, just yeah, blowing yeah. something up like that. Was it uh wrestling fan ever growing up or not really your thing? Not really your your realm. Uh I had little moments, but it wasn't my it wasn't my, like, yeah. I never had anything with resume. I would never was like, oh, dude, Sunday or it's Friday night or anything like that. Never went to an event. Never, you know, just wasn't my cup of tea. I was during yeah. that time skating. So, yeah. Yeah. But then it turns into WrestleMania, which is another so, whole thing. I got a phone call from Knox and he goes, hey, I'm going to do WrestleMania with Sami Zayn. He goes, I want you to be in the ring with me. We're going to do a jackass bit. And I go, he goes, can he slam you? And I go, fuck that. I'm going to slam Sami Zayn. 
And he yeah. goes, you, you're gonna? I'm like, yep. He goes, he calls him, he goes, Sammy loves it. Let's do it. That's so incredible. We practiced it. We flew in three days earlier and we were yep. in that behind the, in the black curtains in the back in doing the, our whole bit. In the, at the stadium or at the hotel? Because when I, they usually set up a ring also for rehearsals, literally in the hotel. We were in the hotel doing it. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. That's awesome. So we were at the hotel and it was two rings. It was the girls on one ring and we were, yep. and they weren't even paying attention. And all of a sudden I slammed Sami Zayn yeah. and they all turned around and they're like, do it again. And so then I held them up. I did it again. And they went ballistic. You knew and you had Dark, it then. Dark Shark goes, oh, the, the crowd's going to, if these girls who see this shit every day, see every this, day. The, the crowd is going to go wild. And I'm That's like, awesome, yep. Man. And I'm like, it's on. Did you have any idea how big WrestleMania is in the wrestling world? Like, was that, no. was that, no. <laughs> this was another, another appearance to you. Yeah. This was just <laughs> like, this was like, let's just show up, do our shit and go. This was, this, yeah, this was going to a random local radio station, essentially talking about yeah, Jackass. Was, oh, <laughs> we're good. Jackass, we got our movie out. We're promoting it. Let's do, we'll do some stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that makes it that makes the whole thing looking back on it the whole thing even better for me and man for everyone that's gonna watch this that's so, so then i do like the crowd went ballistic yeah. went in there yeah and, went at him. and then the crowd changed because we had this bit where i we we're gonna kick sammy in the nuts but then he changed around and grabbed Knox by the the neck yep and he comes over and he goes, all right, I'm going to kick you. But all you got to do is just move and the kick will go like this. So all of practice, I was like, all right, all right. But I thought, no fucking way am I going to fake this in WrestleMania. Yep. I go, I'm going to do it right now so everybody sees it like that. But as soon as we were in the, I fucking took it to the face. I just let him go, wham, and you see my face move. <laughs> and as soon as he did that, the crowd changed and they wanted to kill the yeah. whole place wanted yeah. to kill Sammy. That's man. And that's, which again is a completely different reaction than you guys ever really get. You guys get for something like that. It's always cheered and always, yeah, Whoa, yeah, that yeah. stuff was awesome. He got hurt. The, the guy got hurt. This is great. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in our world, it's, Oh no, fuck him. Like, yeah. and especially yeah, 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 yeah. for celebrities coming in to the wrestling world, uh, whenever they do it, it's always an interesting thing of, will they give a shit? Will they knock it out of the park? I mean, Logan Paul killed it on WrestleMania this year as well. And it's just one of those things where you always kind of question what's going to happen because this isn't their world. Between the ropes isn't their lifestyle. And for Knoxville to absolutely kill it and then to have you guys and it be such a, a legitimate WrestleMania moment really stood out to everyone involved and like in the company and in the watching. It was such a cool moment for, for everyone. It, I actually was supposed to and I didn't play along with it. I didn't know I, I should have or whatever, but I got an email that said I was up for an Epsi award for the body slam. Yeah. And they're like, about it i'm like eh, because i don't care about awards yeah i'm not a guy so literally I, it was you slamming told, him was one of the moments of the year nominees yeah and i told <laughs> not awesome. not like let's win i'm like ah oh, it's too late he goes what and i like, yeah i didn't i didn't like do the job of it you know so man yeah. that's awesome that's it's and it's cool that then you get such a moment like that uh, where it's out of your realm and you get to feel what kind of what we feel in those moments and of tens and hundreds of thousands of people with that reaction. Ever since then, about half the people I run into are like, dude, best WWE fucking thing all year. That was so awesome. Yeah. Like people like I'm hearing it more and more now when I'm out and about or 
at appearances or doing it's things. a huge so, amount of crossover fans yeah. with Jackass and WWE. Yeah. It's a huge totally. amount of crossover. Totally. Awesome, man. Then also, in all of this, I read you are, were raised in a very military family uh, with your parents and that. And then you were doing were doing USO tours for the longest time. Yeah. Like that, so, that for you to go over there and just to on your own, man, and not anything to do with anything other than just wanting to support I them. Never promoted it or nothing. I didn't yeah. want, I never wanted it to be, I never wanted it to be, I was doing it for the promotion. Yeah. I wanted those people to know that I'm doing it for them. And especially like I would be there and they like, I would get dudes jumping out of beds with broken bones going, oh, man, this is the coolest thing. You yeah. came here to see me. You're not some, like, whatever, like, trying to, you know. They could tell it was real. And I'm like, hey, man, if you want a photo, it's yeah. your photo. I go, I don't want photos. I don't need nothing. I go, but for you, I'll tell And they, they loved and respected it. And throughout, the, I did it for, like, seven years. Yep. And throughout years i noticed different things that happened with guys wounded or you know people wounded and one thing i noticed is dudes would get injured be it walter reed and girlfriends or wives would leave them some wouldn't even show up some would show up for a little bit like it was a huge thing so for like two or three christmases i flew there on my own and would go visit the dudes on christmas day who were in like, you know, in the hospital and couldn't get out or whatever. Oh, and I knew that's incredible. Like, yeah. So that's that, one thing I love doing too. And, and like you said, it wasn't about having a camera following you one bit. It was literally about <laughs> doing it as you, as not even as we met as Jason, just yeah. visiting this base yeah. and these people at but the I hospital knew, and that, they, that's, they were fans and it would stoke them out for that they one. wouldn't they wouldn't see it yeah. necessarily as jason they would see it as this guy off of the big screen is coming out of his own uh time to visit yeah. us especially on, yeah. on, during the holidays that's awesome yeah yeah that's I incredible love- that's absolutely incredible so that's the last thing i got the last thing i gotta know you've yeah. done awesome things awesome awesome things uh like those tours and like wrestlemania and all of that coolest moment that you would say coolest thing we all make bucket lists to an extent what is something that happened uh maybe because of jackass because of the movie or any of them that you would have never saw happening on a bucket list man i have like a list of them is there one that stands out? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, um, well, there's there's like a few, and they all have okay. to be. Like, Pulp Fiction is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. And I love Quentin Tarantino. I love Samuel L. Jackson. I love Bruce Willis. I've met all three of them in different realms, and they're the funnest things. I've told the stories, too, before. But so the funny one with Quentin Tarantino is... He came to my town in Hermosa Beach and he was having lunch, like right in the main little area. Like it's this beach pier area with his friends. Yeah. And he, I guess he was telling them, hey, we man lives here. He's always cruising around here. He hangs out. And they're like, no way. Like, he was know? saying this. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, well, I don't know him. He says that to his friends. And 10 minutes later, it's just me and my buddy cruising on our bikes, riding down. And I hear this guy yell like, Wibu! Wibu! and I hate when people like yell, yep. they don't like approach. Yep. So I just ride my bike and I was just like, yeah, peace out. Like, Woo-hoo! and kept going. Don't know who it is. To me, it's just some random. Well, three months later, I'm at the Hateful Eight uh, premiere. Okay. Not, like everybody's there. Samuel L. Jackson's there and stuff. And Quentin, like on the red carpet goes, we man come here, I need to talk to you. Which in itself is nuts. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, what's going on? He goes, were you riding your bike down the pier like three months ago and you pieced me out? And I'm like, that was you? And he goes, yeah, I was talking to my friends. (laughs) Tell them you're here and I hate you and then you do that to me? And I'm like, dude, you yelled from behind me. I'm like, if you wanted 
you should have said Jason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's one of my friends or something, so I'll turn around. <laughs> he goes, ah. Oh. He goes, my friends were giving me shit the whole rest of the day. This is, this is Quentin Tarantino getting blown off by you in front of his friends. Yes. So it literally just jobs him out completely. <laughs> That's <laughs> his friends definitely looked at him as the biggest douche ever because of that, because he pieced him out. That's that's incredible. That I don't know if there's topping that one just because of how he had people with him. If he would have been alone, it would have been one. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now yeah. to his buddies, he's uh, looking like the biggest. They probably loser. tell the story all like, yeah. oh, dude. <laughs> We were there and we man pieced him. Yeah. Didn't even give him a look. <laughs> Didn't even know. It. <laughs> man, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that one. And uh for this whole thing, you legitimately uh so I texted, I texted my parents um when we got uh connected. I said, Hey, I got the interview of all interviews for me. And they're like, yeah, I said, I got we I got we man on. We're gonna do it. And they even were like, that's big. Like for me, this is absolutely huge. So thank you so very, very much for doing this. I appreciate it. And it's uh it's a hell of a talk. Thank you. Small talk. It was a small talk. I don't think this was a small talk, dude. <laughs> well, I appreciate <laughs> that, man. Uh any plugs? What do you got to plug? What do you have going these days? You're still skating. You're yeah. having fun. You're living life. What are you doing? Uh, still doing chronic tacos. Mm -hmm. Got urge for socks. I don't need to plug nothing. You know what I mean? Everybody knows what I do. Uh, it's social media. You can social media pretty much tattletales on you every time you put something out there. So yeah. if somebody wants to know what I'm doing, go to my social media. I'll tattletale on myself. And <laughs> there you go. You'll know what I'm up to. The awesome, funniest man. thing is, I was at a shooting range at my buddy's shooting range, and social media does tattletale on you. But people yeah. think they're being like these badass people, like, dude, I'm at the shooting range shooting guns, and they're felons at there, and they don't realize that the police are watching them. And they're pretty much, I mean, you're, they're, they're telling you're literally them locking yourself up with a cam, with yeah. a cam. <laughs> Here, come on down, pick me up. <laughs> you don't think about that. That's something like you don't think about nowadays. I mean, that's that's a big deal. You're like yeah. you said, you're and and for what? For for five Twitter hearts. Like that's yeah. what you're doing. That's literally it. <laughs> for, for, someone five to get, for someone to just, you know, stroke your ego for two seconds. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then because they're probably doing that to 97,000 people as well. You're not the only one getting the Twitter hearts. Oh, like yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's yeah. everyone on their list. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's so awesome. fun. absolutely incredible. So. Thank you very, very much for doing this. Guys, no keep liking, commenting, subbing, smashing that bell, everything. Thank you. Jason, thank you very, very much. You got it, buddy. Thank you for having me.